With Minecraft 1.14 just around the corner, I thought it'd be a great idea to come in here and take a look at how we can take these amazing biomes that we have within the game and create an even more amazing village atmosphere. We have these awesome new villages being added into the game. They're being completely retrofitted and transformed from what they were previously. But I think with that, we can go one step further. I wanna break away from that little plus line shape that they go within every single village design. Now they are looking a little bit more dynamic Dynamic, but I think we can go ahead and make something really truly amazing here what I want to go ahead and focus on in today's video first and foremost we are here terraforming up our plains area I picked this area out here because I love the little bit of a hill that we have here on the left side and then this more flattened out general plains area that we can eventually I don't know maybe turn into a farmland first thing is going through and fixing up the Minecraft terrain, removing all those stupid little pockets of water and lava or whatever else you might find here, and smoothing out the terrain in a few areas just to make things look a little bit better. As you can see, just with a simple bit of terraforming, that took maybe 10 minutes. Granted, we are in creative here, but not using anything for this one. We're just going straight through, and it really added a lot into the area. I'm really happy with how this one turned out, and I think that makes a great landscape for where we can start talking about how to plan out a village moving forwards. When I think about villages, I don't think of this place that's surrounded by walls and really defended by anything. I, fi I figure those are more of a town type thing. So in this one, I wanna go ahead and use the buildings themselves as the wall. What we're starting with here is we're creating a little general entryway area that we could have an archway or something just so you have kind of a more of a prettied up entrance where the villagers can come back into the city after their long day's work or back into the village, sorry, after their long day's work, taking a look at everything here. And what we're gonna be working on today is laying out a bunch of foundations for what these buildings could look like. You'll see that we're gonna use stone here as well as cobblestone to help differentiate between the different buildings. That being said, starting with this one right here, I figure this could be some side of sort of just general housing area, something that would look out over the main roadway that'll be out there to the left eventually. And we're just kind of adding in these general buildings going throughout the area. A lot of these houses and buildings are gonna be very, very general purpose because inside of villages, they don't really have those dedicated areas. So like this is, they might have like a blacksmith, they might have like a tanner or something like that or a baker, but most of the time, like the baker, for example, probably does it in their own house. So we don't need dedicated buildings for those. Villages live rather simple. You can see here that we're using the shapes of these buildings to create this outer wall area so we don't have to actually go ahead and create a wall in itself. This circular one here though, because I do wanna go ahead and turn that area into a bunch of fields, I figured we needed something to have as a windmill. So we could go ahead and throw in a big old circle structure right there, turn that into a windmill. Then coming over to this next area, I figured every village needs to be complete with a small chapel or church or something like that. So I figured over in this area, we could go ahead and throw in a small church. I do wanna go ahead and shrink this guy down here just a little bit so he's more in line with the size and shape of everything else. We're using a stone brick here to maybe make it feel like this guy's a little bit older. The buildings around it have been retrofitted a lot, a lot and the church itself or the chapel has just been here standing up. And then off there, off to the right side of it, I figured we could go ahead and com continue that wall shape going on and add in a little graveyard or something like that into that area, just because there's gonna be families of people who've been living in this village for generations. And obviously they're gonna wanna go ahead and visit their past relatives' graves or whatever you wanna throw in there. I figured that'd be a great way. Here, I did wanna go to expand the village a little bit further up into our cliff face. So we are gonna be removing these trees in here after we add it in yet another little diagonal building. Because I personally, I love my diagonal buildings. I think those are some of the greatest ways that you can build in Minecraft. There's so much stuff that you can do with them. There's so many things that you can add to them. There's just all the different shapes and everything you can work with. You can really come up here with something unique. Granted, now that this village is so far away from the water, people wouldn't want to walk over to the river every single day to get water. So I figured we could go ahead and add a well in here to more of the central area. And this gives you guys a good glimpse of the general shape and size and everything that we're going with right here. These buildings are actually pretty small. I envision most of them in my head being one story, maybe with a few two story ones and maybe some small skinny towers poking out of a few of them just to break up that skyline a little bit. That's a very important part about building anything is you don't want a flat consistent skyline. You really want to go ahead and add in a lot of depth on that. Just variety is the spice of life, guys. <laughs> but anyways, we went ahead and turned this upper area off to the right there. It's a little bit in the distance now, but that creates almost like a little bit of a neighborhoody feel there. You can see that we curved that second building in there, 
and that made it so that the road has to do a full U shape to get back up into that top area, kind of creating that more of a little community feel right in there, which I really like. Then we added that other diagonal building here, trying to help plot out a few different roads because we don't want all these houses just in a big circle because then that center area would look one really empty and two probably pretty boring. So we want to go ahead and mix this up here just by adding a lot of different elements throughout with all these different house shapes, sizes, and just causing us to force into here creating little tiny roadways, which is the best thing that you can probably do in the area is force your people to walk through somewhere. Don't go with that easiest route. Like you can maybe have that if you're in a big field, like you wanna take that direct route, but also it can make things more interesting if you have to wind around buildings to get to certain places. It takes a little bit longer to travel in a survival world, but overall, I think it personally looks a lot better. You can see down there, we just added in three more structures, pretty simple ones that are just gonna fill in the rest of this house outline shape for the rest of the village in here. Now what I want to do is I want to start coming in, in here and terraforming this area just a little bit more for our roadway. We are going to be bringing in a little bit of world edit now, which by the way is available in 1.13.2 now. If you want to go ahead and download a bucket or spigot server, there is a plugin for it. The mod is not available yet, but if you guys do want to use the plugin, that one is available so you can run a server on your local computer. Anyways, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to talk about world edit. Back to the village here. I wanted to go ahead and add some extra depth into this area by just transforming our pathways in here, similar to what we did in our castle build series, where I just turned it all into cobblestone where I figured everybody could be walking around, things like that. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some coarse dirt as well as bring in a little bit of spruce wood so that it kind of matches here together. And then that actually gives us a half slab that we can work with having the spruce half slabs to help us smooth out the area. You can see here, I tried going with the gravel, and that was just a little bit noisy for my personal liking. So we are gonna go ahead and remove that and actually change that out for some basic, just default dirt because default dirt actually can do some really good work for us here. You can do a lot of things with that. And then that allows us to have a much more natural border because the grass will regrow over the dirt in places and then actually can regrow some of the grass into the surrounding area. That area there along the bottom where I'm placing in the spruce logs right now, I figured that would actually be some sort of an outlook or like a crafting station or something. Maybe one of those houses right there could be a potter or could be like a basket weaver. And then their workstation is just there overlooking the big fields that we're gonna be adding in here. And you can see us adding in these general roadways where people might be walking and any of those grassy places, you could fill those up with market stalls, carts resting on the side, throwing some trees, throwing some extra vegetation. It's a little village after all. We wanna go ahead and have a lot of life in here. You really wanna mix this guy up, just adding in a bunch of variety to it. So there's just a lot of things going on. We wanna make it look like people live here. So throwing some benches, throwing some little vegetable gardens within the city itself. They don't always have to be running out into these big massive fields to gather their food. Maybe they plant their big fields of wheat and then you have a few people that have like little carrot and potato gardens scattered all throughout the place and maybe some pumpkins so they can make their amazing pumpkin pie, all that good stuff. Try and keep a consistent theme to everything going on in here. So maybe I went through on the melons because those in Minecraft are typically more for the jungle vibe of everything. But hey, if you wanna have a jungle village and you wanna throw on some little melon patches, go right ahead. And you know, maybe you can use the beetroot too, but I don't know whoever eats that in this game. Does anybody eat beetroot in Minecraft? Or does everybody just plant one field of it, say, cool, we got our beetroot and leave it? I don't know, let me know down in the comments, guys. Overall, this is what I was envisioning here for our village layout. You can see that great structure right there, just the general shape, it's very rounded instead of Minecraft typically has those plus, plus shape villages like I was talking about previously. And I think going for more of a rounded approach here, one helps them defend themselves. You can have a slight bit of a wall built into the structures themselves so those mobs can't get onto the inside of it and the pillagers can't get in as well, you know? We gotta defend against the pillagers. We have to have some way of protecting our village so we can funnel them all through one main entrance. That's a great way to do it. However, what we wanna be coming in here now doing is we are gonna be bringing in a few roads as you guys can already see like this. And I wanna start planning out where some fields are gonna be going, smoothing out these areas a little bit, doing a little bit more terraforming. Because this is out of the city, I tried bringing in some path block in here to make it a little bit more natural. And you can see this road coming down here all the way down to the water. What I wanna do in here is extend the village out and have a little bit of a satellite village almost right along the water where we can build up some docks, we can build up a, another few houses for storage or something like that, where they can store the goods that they're gonna be shipping off down the river. And just overall, they're gonna have more space down here. So we can have a boat down here that's easily able to pick up things from the area and send it off to whatever city. And that's how these people can get their income. 
We want to make it look like this area is connected with an entire world, not just plop down in our Minecraft world with nowhere to go to. So having roads that just go off into the distance like these ones right here, they don't go anywhere right now, but they look like something going around the place. We are using some more world edit here just to get our crops in so we can see this general picture because one, I did not want to go ahead and just place these giant wheat fields by hand. I've done that before in survival and it takes a long time, guys. I, I will, I put my hours in for this stuff and I think it's okay to skip out here for this one to make it a little bit faster for the sake of the video. But overall, you can see just this awesome environment really starting to come together here, leaving a few of the trees dotted within the fields and just creating this really lush environment with these giant wheat fields stretching all over the place, filling this entire plains bam that we're occupying in here. And that would give our villagers so much food and really a great way to jumpstart an economy and do all these amazing things. You can see in this one that we actually left a few of the places without wheat in them. We just let it turn back to dirt and that can actually make it look a lot more natural and just full and more lifelike. Adding more variety to it can really help your area look a lot more interesting. I'm using an old trick here that I found a long time ago where if you take three sides of where you plant a sapling down, stack up some sand, and then just bone meal the heck out of that sapling, you'll typically get a pretty tall tree out of it. If there's a better way of doing it, somebody let me know because I have no idea how to do this properly. That's just what I've always done. But with that, that basically brings us to the end of what I wanted this village area to look like. You can see that we have this really cool layout here, which there will be a world download below. If you guys want to check it out, be my guest. It's awesome. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Really hope you enjoyed it. But yeah, world down below, we got this amazing area here that we can go ahead and create a really cool custom village out of this. You could easily transform a Minecraft village and turn it into this. You could make it your own style. You could use the same exact style that we're seeing in these new Minecraft 1.14 villages. There's so many different things you can do to these environments. You can have all different types of structures in here. Whatever you wanna do, we could have a lot of bakers. You're gonna need a lot of housing for the farm hands. You're gonna need a lot of areas. We're gonna need a blacksmith. We're gonna need a stable so that we can have animals to help plow the area, get the tools to build the plows, all that good stuff. There's so much stuff going on here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you all enjoyed taking a look at this village creation process with me here today. I had a lot of fun with this one. It was really cool kind of coming up with a very natural design here of something that looked like a sprawling little village that was very full of life and all that good stuff up here on top of our little hill, obviously surrounded by these giant wheat fields. We have so much space around here that we can fill with cool things that our villagers can use to eat, make their own income, all that good stuff. The big thing about these villages is not only within the village itself, but taking on the rest of the area around it, keeping it still with that Minecraft feel, keeping all these very thick forests in here and everything like that. But when you come back over into the village, they have their village life here where they're all living in. They don't have those little tiny two by five wheat fields all over the place, but instead they have this massive place where your villagers might be able to get lost in. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video today. Hopefully you guys are as pumped for 1.14 as I am so that we can start bringing in our own custom villages and just having so much more fun. Anyways, please hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new and I will catch you on the flip side. <laughs>